well hi everyone uh, we discussed about a sync await and configure await uh, keywords with respect to a ui application wpf application in our previous session now we are going to discuss these terminologies with respect to the api applications or web applications okay so uh, how will we apply async await operations on the server side okay and how it helps us to optimize the server side operations and server side calls okay so let's have a look at a simple action method that i have implemented over here okay a weather forecast controller okay a sample controller or api controller that i have created okay so it has uh, two action methods one gets just the data a trivial string which says today's weather condition is mostly sunny just a dummy string okay and then another get call which actually gets which actually makes a call to this particular action method and returns the response okay so what are the best practices we should follow when we implement our apis okay with the direction of async and await guys we can make use of these things on our action methods so as you can see here i have put on my action method get so public async task of action result of string okay so basically i am putting a trace line or a debug dot write line to check which thread i am in before initiating this asynchronous operation curl and after the uh, synchronous operation call okay and then i'm returning the result and i have one private method which actually performs the two call async which is nothing but hits my same server but calls this action method just to simulate this asynchronous operation on the server side okay so let's have a look at this particular action methods implementation okay see here this is a asynchronous method and Instead of making an await on Drupal async straight away, I'm calling Drupal async and then I'm getting the result. Okay, when I run this particular implementation, let's see what will be the uh, output statement. Okay, what will be the output of this managed thread IDs in our debug window? Okay, let me run this. Good. the browser window opened and I should get that string content yeah today's weather condition is mostly sunny you can see before curl I was in thread 6 okay in order to serve my browser request okay there was a thread allocated and that threads ID was 6 and after performing the curl operation still my thread ID is 6 that means basically I executed this operation synchronously here even if I had decorated as an asynchronous here, what I did is I straight away waited over here to get my result. Until and unless I didn't get result, I won't proceed to this after curl statement. That's why both of the thread IDs were 6. But guys, this is not a preferred approach. This is a bad practice. When you have an ability to execute server side call asynchronously which is independent of other operations it's a best practice to make use of async and the await over here so basically here what happened you know the thread which was allocated to serve the request was used to perform the do curl async also that's why both the thread ids were six now let's make a little change to this implementation and what i will do is now i will await on this asynchronous operation which await as and run and let's check the console window okay my browser window opened i got the response let's see the status of debug window can you see the difference guys before curl we are in thread 6 which means the thread allocated to serve the request or i will say main thread or main thread for my current request okay so but when i did the curl operation just have a look at this 
I was on a separate or the background thread. So basically I have achieved asynchronous processing over here guys. So how that magic happened? Pretty simple. What I did? I used async and then I awaited in order to run my curl operation on a separate thread. Okay. And after performing that operation on separate thread asynchronously, I got the response. And if you provide a keen observation, this response is a string response that I sent with the OK status to my browser. Okay. So basically here I didn't wait it on anyone. That's why my thread IDs are different. Ideally, this is the preferred approach we should use when we write our web APIs. Okay. So one most important thing I would like to highlight over here. In ASP.NET Core, we don't have the concept of synchronization contexts. Okay, I hope you people remember in our .NET frameworks, ASP.NET framework, okay, we had the concept of synchronization contexts. Okay, when you switch from one thread to another thread in the background, the runtime used to get the synchronization context of the thread to which we are going to switch. We were maintaining a state and there was a state machine running behind. But with the introduction of .NET Core and ASP.NET Core, we don't have the concept of synchronization contexts. That's why even if, even after performing an asynchronous operation on separate thread, you can see that the rest of the statements of the action method have been executed on the secondary thread itself. We don't want to wait for our thread which actually initiated our request this is an advantage and using this only microsoft has implemented the entire request pipeline in asynchronous fashion okay guys so that's being said that microsoft has removed the concept of synchronization context applying configure await has no effect on our implementations now onwards so if you put configure await of true and run the application you will see the same response that we saw with just the await keyword okay we will come to the main thread we will come to the our main request thread then we will initiate our do call async on the background thread and the background thread will continue with the rest of the tasks in an asynchronous way so browser has opened here and let me check the debug window oh, key output can you see here before curl we were in thread 4 and after curl we are in thread 5 which is a background thread so basically no impact and just for the sake of demonstration even if I pass false and run this okay we got the server response and uh, if we go to the output window can you see this guys before curl we are in thread 9 after curl we are in thread 6 okay but still what I recommend is if by any chance your ASP.NET Core API implementation code is making use of some .NET framework libraries, I would strictly recommend you to make use of configure await of false. Okay? That is one thing I would like to recommend over here. And configure await of true, that is if, if you are performing some background server operations for example if this particular service is making call to an external service and there is a scenario where you want to achieve the update or any processing operation on the request thread itself i would recommend you to go with configure await of true or straight away calling dot result on this okay so in order to conclude the async await and configure await uh, async asynchronous programming techniques what I would like to say is that 
in order to achieve asynchronous operation on the server side make use of async and await keywords okay and due to some reason if you want to execute all your action method codes in the same request thread straight away go for the result property of your task let me quickly show that that's it result and get rid of the await okay this is really a bad practice which will make your APIs slower in the response time as well as, well as in the processing time itself okay I won't recommend this but if there is a situation where you were forced to use this then you want your action method code to be executed on the thread which initiated the request then go for this okay and as I have already explained the configure await of true and false don't have much impact as you have already seen in the output window okay the moment you initiate a synchronous operation they will run on a separate thread and they will continue on that background thread itself so that's it from my side uh, for the server side programming uh, or server side asynchronous programming okay guys so i hope you enjoyed this session and that's it for the today thank you